Hey everyone, uh, this is meteorologist Jeremy Lewan with your latest weather update on this potentially flooding storm that's pushing its way up the coast. It's already caused some havoc in South Carolina. Uh, we already saw some possible brief tornadoes as well as some heavy rains and flash flood emergencies uh, for South Carolina and all of that heavy rain is pushing its way northward. So uh, if you're just joining us right now, I'm Storm Tracker 16 meteorologist Jeremy Lewan. Thank you so much for joining us here on this live weather update on the possibility of some flooding as we go through the next few hours overnight into tomorrow as we see a pretty significant coastal storm work its way up the coast. So here's where we already have some flood watches in effect pretty much for our entire region. We have uh, this shaded green indicates that we have a flood watch for every single county except for Clinton County. And that doesn't mean Clinton County isn't going to get rain. It's just not going to get flooding rain. The rest of us all have the potential for flooding as we go through the next few hours. So let me give you a closer look at that map so you can see it up close. And there are, is also another National Weather Service advisory in effect, a winter weather advisory until Tuesday at 10, 10 a.m. for counties to the west of Center County. And that's because we could see enough cold air on the back end of the system to usher in some possible snow showers for western Pennsylvania and even across portions of northern and central Pennsylvania, some possible flurries and flakes, but not as significant as what they'll see out in western Pennsylvania. So let's get to the rain first. Let's give you a live view right now of Pottsville where you can see the raindrops on the lens, also some low clouds, dense fog too as the storm approaches. And this is a live view from Williamsport. A little bit better visibility there, but you can see if you look at the streets that there is some rain already that has fallen. Kurt texted me earlier and told me that he picked up a little bit over a quarter of an inch of rain in his backyard weather station. And that's pretty much the average for the Wyoming Valley and up into Scranton, Wilkesbury. We're seeing about two tenths to three tenths of an inch of rain has already fallen across the region. We're going to see an additional inch or two on top of that. So here's what it looks like right now on radar. There are some light showers pushing through portions of all of our area, but there are some embedded moderate showers, specifically in Wayne and Pike counties. You can see there near Lackawaxen already some moderate downpours. Blooming Grove got in on some of those moderate downpours as well. They're pushing their way northward. And then jumping over to Tioga and Bradford counties, Canton saw a heavy downpour briefly between 5 and 6 o'clock. That's pushing its way towards Elmira. But this is just the appetizer before the main course, the real meat and potatoes of this storm, pushes its way into our region overnight tonight. Here's the larger picture. You can see the coastal storm pushing its way through uh, Virginia and now into West Virginia as well. Heavier bouts of rain, those oranges and reds indicating really heavy downpours. It already pushed through portions of South Carolina earlier today. That's when it spawned those po that possible tornado as well as uh, the heavier bouts of rain causing flooding there too. And we indicate heavy rain and low pressure system strength based on their pressure inside the storm. So the lower the pressure, the stronger the storm this is. And really anything under 1,000 millibars is a good benchmark for a pretty strong storm. And this storm off the coast of South Carolina has an internal pressure of 990 millibars. So it is definitely a strong storm packing a punch and giving lots of heavy wind, heavy rain, and even wind gusts up to 30 miles per hour. It's going to combine with that other low pressure that's situated up in Michigan and bring us that heavy rain overnight tonight into tomorrow. But until then, we have a surge of warm air from the south, and you can see temperatures still in the 50s at this time of night. 50 in Stillwater, 46 in Lopez, 46 in Forkston, but still 50 in Lehigh and in Tower City. And temperatures are not going to drop overnight tonight. Normally we see temperatures drop into the 40s and 30s. At this time of year, we actually should get down to 26 at night. But we're going to stay in the upper 40s and 50s all night tonight because of that warm surging air from the south. As we go through the next few hours, we'll see widespread moderate downpours by 10 o'clock, specifically centered there in central Pennsylvania, down through Union, Snyder, Montour, Columbia, Northumberland counties too. Then it really fills in in northeastern Pennsylvania by 2 o'clock in the morning. That's when you'll see those heaviest downpours. Those reds, oranges, those are indicating very heavy downpours. At least this isn't snow, though, because if it were snow, we'd be talking over a foot, if not two feet, of snow. So luckily, right now, we're just dealing with the rain, but it could cause some problems for those of you in low-lying areas, especially near underpasses or near streams and creeks that overflow their banks frequently. That's what you're going to see as we go through the overnight hours into tomorrow because we'll see such heavy rain in northeastern Pennsylvania, specifically in eastern Pennsylvania as well. 
By 5 o'clock, things start to clear out for central Pennsylvania. Clinton, like Cumming counties, that's why Clinton County is under the flood watch, because it sees the clearing sooner than the rest of central and northeastern Pennsylvania. And then as we go through the morning hours, 7.30, even 8 o'clock, we'll see still heavier downpours, Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, but starting to see some clearing uh, through Columbia, Montour, Northumberland, Union, Snyder counties. By 10 o'clock, we'll see our last few sprinkles uh, and showers pushing through Wayne and Pike counties. And by 12 o'clock noon, everybody's almost dry. But you can see there are some snow showers materializing there in Tioga County and out towards uh, western Pennsylvania. And as we go through the day on Monday, we could see some of those accumulate. But here's what we see as far as rainfall accumulations go for portions of central Pennsylvania like Renova, Mill Hall, maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch of rain, out towards Williamsport and Danville, over an inch of rain, pushing towards Wilkesbury and Hazleton and Luzerne County, over two inches of rain possible, and then all the way eastward Pennsylvania, maybe Pike, uh, also Monroe counties into the Poconos, over two inches of rain are definitely possible. So be aware that this is going to be a strong uh, rainfall event that could drop over two inches of rain in portions of eastern Pennsylvania that will cause problems for Monday morning and Monday afternoon as you're trying to head anywhere. If you're traveling places that uh, frequently flood, I would really recommend that you try to navigate a different route so that you don't end up in those flooded waters. Because remember, all you need is six inches of running water to move an entire vehicle. Uh, so you never want to attempt to go through a flooded road just in case that water is moving. Uh, it's, you never know how dangerous it can be. Moving ahead through Monday, you see those snow showers starting to develop as we see that colder air surge in on the back side of the storm. By 8 o'clock, we could see some snow showers pushing through central and northeastern Pennsylvania. By Tuesday morning, really early in the morning, right, 3.30, 4 o'clock, we could see those streaming bands of snow showers. And the different models are having a different way of uh, materializing that snowfall. The GFS is a little more bullish. It's thinking over a half inch of snow for a lot of locations, possibly even approaching an inch of snow for northern Pennsylvania and uh, our higher elevations. But I don't think that's going to materialize. The European model is a lot less, uh, it's, it's kind of underestimating the snow, I think, as well. This is showing a tenth of an inch of snow for Wellsboro, Tawanda, Wilkesbury, and Williamsport, and nothing for Mount Pocono, Albrightsville, Lakeville, Honesdale, uh, down through the southern tier. I think, if anything, if these snow showers do happen, we'll see maybe two tenths of an inch of snow to three tenths of an inch of snow for all of our region. That could be a coating in our valley cities just because of the fact that it's normally warmer in our valley cities and maybe a little bit more in our higher elevations. But just know that there could be a coating Monday evening through Tuesday morning of snow. As we go through the next few hours, take a look at this. We start off warmer than we do in the middle portion of the day. Normally our high temperature happens around 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon this time of year. Well, not this time. We're going to start off in the 50s. As a matter of fact, our high temperature will probably be logged at midnight at 53 degrees. And then we'll continually consistently go down as that storm system pushes through. And then we see that colder air wind shift happen on the northwest side of the system. And by tomorrow evening, temperatures will already be down in the 30s and feeling like the low 30s, if not upper 20s, with the increased winds that we'll see tomorrow. So just around 1130, we could see wind gusts up to 17 miles per hour in Mount Pocono and Albrightsville, 15 miles per hour in Frackville, 13 miles per hour in State College, and then continuing through the day, still continued wind gusts. So as we continue to drop off in temperature, we'll start to feel the fact that it'll be cooler out there because those wind chills will add on to shaving off those temperatures. All right, here's your seven-day forecast. Heavy morning rain tomorrow. 53 will be our high, but remember that happens at midnight. It will be breezy throughout the day, not just on Monday, but also Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, too. Tuesday, high temperature only 37 degrees. And as we go through the day on Wednesday, things will shape up. It'll be a lot nicer. The uh, sun will come back out again. It'll actually be mostly sunny, maybe just a few high clouds. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, if you're heading off, maybe traveling away from Scranton to be able to enjoy uh, your holiday get-togethers, maybe you're heading off for Christmas, it's going to be nice travel weather all the way through Sunday. But remember, on Saturday, we will have a few more clouds, so if you're doing anything this weekend, maybe preparing for the holidays, Sunday looks like the sunnier half of the weekend. With that weather update, that latest weather update, I'm meteorologist Jeremy Lewan, and I want to make sure that you remember we do have the chance for flooding overnight tonight into tomorrow. And if you see any flooded roads, please.